cannot see 30 years in a plan until I retire. I cannot see it for anything. Even if I had to take a lower paying job, I would do that rather than stay at Cadillac. And I do know that after I come out, as a beginning registered nurse, I will start at a lower pay than I am on the motor line, but it's something I enjoy. After a few days of orientation, the Americans began work in the group assembly training section. Work reorganization at Saab Scania includes elements of industrial democracy, with workers participating in production and planning groups. But it was the group assembly of gasoline engines that the Americans were asked to compare with their experience on the assembly lines of Detroit. Sven Ingve, an executive at Saab Scania, was asked about the company's work enlargement program. In a change from a traditional assembly line, Groups of three workers complete the assembly of the entire engine in horseshoe-shaped work areas. We started these discussions in 1969, and um, the reason why we did it was that um, we had just started a new assembly plan, and uh, we knew that uh, there were some problems with it, because uh, we had built a new plant, quite modern one, with um, a conventional line system, and uh, we also had the experiences that um, uh, the turnover was increased and also absentees. And uh, together with the trade union, we discussed could we do anything against it. We had to make a choice when we started our gasoline engine plant. We could have the normal traditional conventional line system. But we knew that that would give us a work cycle for every member of 1.8 minutes always repeated all over again and we wanted to do something else to give a job enlargement so this group assembly means that every member in a group of three they can make their own choice to make a third of the engine then we have got a job enlargement of 10 minutes for every engine and they can assemble the entire engine individually and um, then the time is 30 minutes so we have succeeded to come up to a job enlargement from 1.8 minutes to 10 or 30 minutes. Uh, it is uh, also much better because uh, it gives the workers a much a better flexibility. They could work in their own speed. They can work very hard in the morning and they can take it slower in the afternoon. For three weeks, the Americans worked together in training groups while learning the Saab Scania group assembly method. 
Then they were assigned individually to work alongside experienced local workers in the regular production groups. How do you see the work environment here in relationship to back home? Well, back home, uh, I find a more relaxed, uh, comfortable type atmosphere than I do here. Of course, uh, taking consideration that uh, I don't speak the language, so there's a lack of any communication here that has a great deal to do with my questions about the job. Uh, the way the system is set up is a nice system if you can work at your own pace, uh, normal pace like we work in the States. But here I find that uh, it's more of an incentive base, you know, about people working to get ahead so they can sit down, as opposed to working at a comfortable speed all day. I guess it has the advantages of them, but myself personally, I would prefer the type of situation that I have at home. So you don't see this being applicable to what you'd be doing in the States, this kind of method of working? First of all, you have to take in consideration of the uh, size of their production plant, uh, the number of engines that they're turning out, the type of engine. This is practically a hand-built engine. We couldn't afford that type of situation in the United States. What do you think about going home to your job back in the States? Well, we'll start it off with this. I don't want to go back home. I want to stay here. I like to work here much better. You're not pushed. Uh, by that, I mean at home, we do 88 motors an hour. And it's a constant go, go, go. Here, you kind of can kind of take your time and think things out. You think that if you're working over many years, that this kind of changing the work around would really make it less monotonous? Oh, I think so, yes. It'd give you a little bit more to do on your job. And then have the different uh, areas set up like this where you wouldn't be pushed so much. Bill, how, how does the, the working environment here compare to what the working environment and where you work at home is like? Well, at home it's it's a lot more monotonous than here. But in these particular groups here, you have a lot more speed than you have at home. So I don't know which you could say is better. Yeah. Well, I think our people back home would probably take the monotony compared to the speed. Is, is there any difference in sense of accomplishment? They're feeling that here, here there is, yeah. You put a lot more, you do a lot more tubing engine. You practically build the whole engine yourself. And I think there's a lot more satisfaction here in your job, but not back home. Because back home, you might be just putting in three or four bolts, and that's it, all day long. But, but you'd, from what I gather, you'd still take the stakes, and you think most people would? I think so. Compared to the speed here, I think the people would rather have the monotony than the speed that you'd have to work at. But what about being able to sort of interact with other people while you're working? Well, you can to a certain extent back home. Yeah. But uh, right now, like here in this group here, you don't, uh, it's all work. <laughs> they, uh, the faster you get, the, uh, I suppose if I was here for six, eight months, I'd probably get faster. I would have time to talk around them, but not. Do you think this kind of system's adaptable to the kind of production and costs and size of engine in the States? No. I don't think they could afford to put an operation like this into effect. They still get the kind of production they want. But we're getting, say, a thousand engines a day per shift compared to a few here that they get. I just don't think they could do it. We still make money. It would cost them too much. What about stuff like safety and noise level and pollution and that sort of thing? I think all that's better here. Safety, your, your noise level way down. We can talk in a normal voice here. Back in the States, you couldn't talk in a normal voice. I haven't been in training for two weeks, and I've been out with a regular group, 
But I noticed in the morning, the first time they worked very fast, set their own pace, so had to be down earlier, I imagine. But they have a good system. How is that different from the pace where you worked back in the States? Well, uh, the pace is, well, the different pace. They make their own pace. The production is set, and then the production is done, they're true. They just sit, relax. In the States or here? No, not, not in the States. Here. United States, the assembly line runs to the last minute, the last second. So there is no, no medium between. But if this is here, what they call on teamwork, this is make a good setup if you can get along with one another, yeah. if there's not too much absenteeism. Yeah. That is very good. Yeah. Do you find that working in this group method, do you get as much or less uh, sort of personal flexibility and, and dealing with people as people from what you, from what you do back in the States? Um, so far, no. I haven't found it that because of the work pace. You know, they work very rapidly. Maybe once you get used to it, if you do, if you can get used to it, it, may, it might be that way. But uh, right now, I can't. I can't see that it worked out that way. Uh, the speed at which you have to work is very fast in order to make your quota. So it's very difficult to carry on a conversation for, for me because I'm not used to this uh, this pace and you have to keep your eyes on what you're doing all the time maybe once you get used to it you can work automatically I don't think so uh, uh, probably uh, psychologically uh, the work is not as monotonous as the assembly line type of work but then again I think people would uh, I'm talking about people in the States, you know, because it's different type of people, different culture. They would, uh, I think they would much rather, if they had the choice, you know, if they had the, uh, the same uh, situation that I have here of working here and then uh, comparing it with the States, I think they would take the monotony, because that way they could carry on the conversations and uh, carry on a relationship all through the day. Here. It gives you a greater challenge as far as uh, learning goes. But I've also found, I've realized today only, that after a period of time, it's no longer a learning experience. Now it's memory. So there's really no more stimulus in that aspect, in that respect. So if you were going to be around at the, at the job for 10 years, do you feel that this way of working would really make the job more meaningful for you? Well, it also depends on what else you intend to be doing. If this was your only thing, if this was the only thing you were doing at the time, no school, no other interests or anything, then I would choose this place because of the fact that you can have um, an alternative. You can transfer to another job if you don't like it. But if, given the kind of other interests you have in the States? Then I, have, I tend to go and stay in the States because this job demands too much. It controls your life too much. What do you think the effect of having the American workers here uh, has been on the, the other workers in the plant? Well, what I have especially noticed, that's how many of our workers can speak some English. Uh, I think those three Americans, they have, they have it very easy to talk to people. And they have, well, many of our workers have been happier to work together with us. They're, they're talking very much while they're working. How have the American workers uh, performed in the group assembly, to your mind? Well, I think uh, the time they have been here is a little too short. Uh, we normally have four weeks uh, for to learn this work. And uh, they have been here three and a half weeks. 
I think they, it had been better <clears throat> if they stayed eight, nine weeks. As a foreman, how have you worked out any problems between you and the American workers uh, while working in the groups? Well, we had some small, very small problems. I can name one. Uh, they are, I, I suppose, they used to being told when to start to work. Our people here, they, they begin. I don't have to tell them. Uh, those three Americans, uh, they several mornings have been sitting drinking coffee after we started. And then I have could, could to go and tell, tell them, we start now. In your mind, is the group assembly a successful idea in terms of production and in terms of making the workers feeling of work more meaningful? Yes, I think so. It's uh, it's it's a good way, but uh, there is more to do on this. If you see in the production, I think in this beginning we have tried this now the third year. We lose directly about eight, ten percent, but there is also. Uh, such thing that those girls, they stay at work, very good. They, they, they not stay home. We have about 10% staying at home, and the normal is about 25%. This system is good, good start. We have about 75% from Finland and Yugoslavia. 70% of the workers have never been working anywhere. It's their first job. From the beginning, we have done this, those jobs to fit women. And it's very hard to get the men. It has been the last 10 years in Sweden uh, more attractive to study more to be an engineer, something like that. This is dirty, but now when we are changing the work, it's clean. Uh, they have something to say about the work, uh, to decide. It's, it's more, it's better. Working at that pace, that job is just as boring. <laughs> they know I've only been trained for about two weeks. I shouldn't normally be in one of those groups yet. And they knew this, and they understood it. They would work with me, which they did. But I still had that sort of like guilty feeling that I was slowing them down because of the fact there was always a couple engines behind me waiting to be done. Uh, so I can see, you know, even though I said to myself before I went down there that I don't care whether, how many engines pile up, I'm, I'm going to take my time. But I still developed that feeling. Like, you know, gee, I hope I'm not holding this girl up back there. I mean, she's got two engines behind me now. I still develop that feeling. Uh, for instance, uh, I find that the regimentation of work here to be uh, so that it's unimaginable to me. Uh, like, uh, virtually nobody goes and takes a drink of water. Nobody smokes a cigarette. Nobody uh, takes coffee unless everybody goes. This is regimentation. Everybody goes at one time. It's not the point that um, they can't have water, or they can't have uh, a drink, or coffee, or they can't have cigarettes. It's just as it just isn't done by the group. And then everything runs in a group. Everybody goes to the coffee thing together at a specific time. No whistles. No foreman's telling. It's just like, bang, this is the time to do it. Everybody marches here and sit down and everybody marches back. They get a little less boredom of the fact that they can switch around different jobs every day, different positions, but still it's a going to be a boring job. It's still the same thing over and over again. By definition of monotony. Yeah. Something you're doing over and over. You no matter what station you're on, you're still going to be doing the same thing because you know how to do it all. Right. So but if you wanted to, you could do it all, weeks but you're still going to do it. The difference in putting a screw in a flywheel or putting one in the front end of it or putting one in the no, uh, back end of it is, uh, is, is not enough to kill monotony. These workers 
by what workers used to do in the States before the Union got in. This is a very backward situation. And they, they are using it. The company is using it. You know, they, they're, they're going to they're going to write it for all it's worth. No complaining. They sit back. No. They they say. I mean that. I mean, I mean well, see, that would get back, back on on the black side. They're, yeah, they're the Florida, typical Florida, yes, Florida, the Florida, boss Florida, people, you know. Florida, and Florida. that don't hit with me at all. I mean, from I mean, being black, yeah. that yes, a boss that's been played out there. And they they just did that, you know. Uh, we we got this we got this quota to make. We, we got to make the quota. The, the the boss man said we we got to do this. And boom, that's it. You know. Well, I'm tired. I've got a headache. So what? We got this job. If um you're a computer, you're fine. I like the way the job is set up here better than in the states, because I'm not confined to one place. I can move around, and uh, the pace isn't as fast. The working conditions, I like a little better because I'm not working elbow to elbow like I am back in the States. I find here that uh, the foreman and uh, the workers have a much better relationship than back in the States. And... Just think it would think this way if you hadn't brought your family over. To what? We just think the same way if you hadn't brought your family over talking so nicely about Uh family. Yeah, working conditions, yes, I would. I would miss my family. Can I get that for I really would. Mm-hmm. I'd probably send him a telegram and tell him to come on over. But do you think that, you know, the kind of job you have in Detroit, and, and thinking about going back to it, how would you change the job after what you sort of... Figured out here, you know, if you had the chance. Well, if my job could be changed back in the states, I would like a setup very similar to what we got here. What about the pace? Well, the pace is fast to me, as I as I was put in uh, Group Four, which is a faster pace than Group One is. But I think after a period of time, once you could coordinate yourself, I don't think it would be that bad. Because when I find myself doing 88 motors on the line of Cadillac, that's a fast pace and you're really moving. Do you like the idea of being connected to other people in a group? Well, I like the way the groups are set up here because really one person relies on the other person and everybody works together. Do you think the system's adaptable to the States? No. Why not? Our motors are much bigger than these motors are. Our, some of our parts is a lot heavier than what these parts are, and it would cost the company, I think, really too much money to set up something like this. And I do think setting up Cadillac like this, that it would knock a lot of people out of work. What about the business of the relationship between uh, the workers and the management and the union? Here? Yeah. Well, I think they're pretty good. They seem to get along so much better. They know what to do when a problem comes up, and I mean, unless it's an absolute emergency, it's about the only time you see a foreman here. And back in the States, you see foremans running here and there all the time. I'm the only eyeball that likes it here. You need oil pump, <laughs> but not too much glue. Nobody knows the difference. <laughs> <laughs> What do you know about job enrichment? Who do you talk to? It depends on each person. But the people that you can talk to have a whole attitude about work because they're in a transitional base. They're making some extra money and they're going into higher and better things. The people you can relate to. The people you can speak with. They're only transitional. And they don't even plan on being that. So that's the worst thing that could possibly happen to them. Our whole orientation since we've been here has been on one side because of our isolation by language barriers, by maneuverability, by control of where we be and when we be, and like telephones. Uh, we have nothing television. 
We're isolated. Isolated. Like the fact, like the fact that you know, they tell us, you know, give us a list of ideas and stuff. And we develop out of each group. We develop other ideas and other questions to try and follow up. But the fact, like you're saying, the, the isolation is. Uh, they want us to find out these questions and find out these answers. We're here to investigate. Yet you don't really have the time to investigate when you're actually working in uh, on the engines. <laughs> you're I mean, the only time you got is your break time to go around and try and ask these and questions. You the question as to what she says that we're here for. What you so you want to really here to investigate. investigate. And then when you look at just what you're doing, doing, then you say, well, what am I don't know if we've done a good enough job. Like the current Cornell Board Foundation. But I got to the point like last week, we've done everything that they wanted us to do. And we've been fairly honest with them, I think. Uh, but uh, I got to the point last week, uh, I'm over here now, and uh, now it, my, my, uh, my uh, ideas have changed some. Uh, about the, this whole experiment. I'm still finding out what they want to find out, and studying new things. But like, after I, uh, I talked to this one girl that we work with right from the beginning, one is Ingrid, and I talked to her about this, because it bothered me how serious the people are in the plants. And I thought to myself, well, last week, I said, it really hit me, you know, when she said about the singing part. She liked the way we were always singing, this group, you know, happy-go-lucky with our work. I said, well, we make it. I said, so you should try it. You'd, you'd like it. She said, well, yeah. She says, I'd like to. She said, but everybody around me would think I was crazy. That's the attitude they have. So I thought to myself, you know, after last week, I said, this, this if I can leave here, I got another week to do it in. If I can leave here and have somebody, just one person, I'll probably never know about it. But to have the feeling that at least one person in that whole doggone plant is going to think about us after we got after we're gone and start humming to themselves or singing to themselves, I think it would be a better workplace for them. And I would, as far as I as far as I feel, I feel that uh, my job has been accomplished for what I'm looking for. On their last day of work before returning home, the Americans and local workers exchanged gifts at a farewell party. Since we've been back, a lot of your, most of your newspaper articles, I won't say all of them, but most of them, seem to play up the fact that five of, of, of us picked the states rather than Subscania, and only one picked Subscania. But uh, they seem to overlook, they don't seem to even mention a lot of it in their article, exactly what 
the question was when we, what we were asked that made us give that particular answer. We were talking about one thing that we were sent over there for, the group assembly, versus our, our motor line over here in the States. This is where we made the pick. But if, you know, if you had more aspects into it and you had to pick overall, the answers might have been some different. You know, we thought, well, man, these, guys, these people are really going to have a great deal over there. We sort of let down. Uh, because, like you said, you know, they knew we were coming over to study one part. So this is what they, they built us on to start with over here in New York. And when we got over there before we got into the plant. And then, like, the first time we went in there and found out, hey, you got 300 people in this plant, but this group assembly was sent over for was only one small part of the plant, something like 50 people. So you really was sort of a letdown there, you know. If our plants were to just uh, start maybe uh, having, like, little work groups, meetings about their own workplace, it's a start. It would be a start. Right now, there's nothing. There's no real communication between worker and management. It's, I'm management, you do this, this is your job. We don't want to hear about it. But you got to have somebody, like we said, when the worker speaks, somebody's got to listen. We don't have that right now. Maybe we can improve there. Everyone I talk to, I try to stress the fact that there are a lot of things here that need to be improved, and there are a lot of things there that need to be improved. And just because one person agree to stay in Sweden is not saying that the U.S. is perfect and that Sweden has nothing to offer or vice versa, that Sweden is perfect and the U.S. has nothing to offer. Hopefully, the, these, that's what I'm saying, the, all the ideas can be compiled into improving both systems because it, all you see is one American preferred Sweden Five did not. Boom. America's got it made. Sweden. I still go back to that I like group assembly better because uh, being over there, you worked with women around 30, 40 years old. And uh, the women yeah. there seem to take much more pride in their work than what they do here. And I think that I found with the people that I was working with in this group assembly that uh, they depend on each other when they're working. We're here, it's uh, eye for eye, and this is it. I think you have to find yourself that you put yourself in a little bit of a more of a responsibility of doing this type of work of assembling the whole motor because it only takes one goof up to tear the motor up. And uh, some people just like to do one thing, where I, I like to do a variety of things. I get very bored by doing the same thing day in and day out, five, six days a week, where some people this may be up their alley, but it's not up mine. I don't like that. Why do you think the others uh, were different? From well, let me say this. I, I think the reason why I've got this, I think that you're going to find that there's some people who like to do a job that doesn't have to think. And myself, I don't like to catch myself in a corner to where I, well, I do this all day long and I can almost do it with my eyes closed. Well, there you couldn't do it because you had to be on your toes and thinking all the time. And I think this is maybe why the others didn't really care for it like I did. I had an interview coming back, talked to Douglas Frazier at uh, UAW. And they were talking about job enrichment. And we're searching here and we're searching there. We're searching all over the world trying to find better ways to uh, make a worker happy in his work. I said, hey, uh, why are you send me 4,000 miles to, to find out what I what I would like to have, you know, when uh, I, I'm a human being just like you. What is your situation? What's good to you? What's 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 a good working environment? Good situation? Air conditioning? Uh, to be able to uh, move about? To uh, to be able to find some esteem within yourself? To be able to go home with your family and be proud of what you're doing? And say, I want the same thing. My values and my priorities are the same as yours. You know what's good. Everybody knows it's good. Uh, the, the company, the corporation, know, uh, the executive in the office know what kind of conditions he like. And I know less than him. I like those same conditions. Apply some of the things that you want for yourself to me. And uh, we'll find that everybody will be happy within this work situation. It's no great mystery 
or what job enrichment is, or what environment means, because you know what environment means. Environment means the same thing to me as it do you. I like to be comfortable, I like to feel that I'm somebody. I like to have some meaning and direction in my life. And I don't think it's necessary to go so far, but to look within yourself, those who are asking the questions, the people that are academicians and what have you, who ask all these questions, the scientists who ask these questions, what's good environment for them? What's good working conditions for them? Is it nice to sit down at your table at nine o'clock and have breakfast with your family or to leave the house at four o'clock in the morning and dead of night and not see your family until the afternoon if you see them then? Uh, these things are important to me as it is to you. In you know, at Subscania, they had a lot of things that were really going for them. They owned the, the, the in fact, the majority of the things there, you know, are, are better to, than uh, than are here. But that, that that experience of just working in that one little section, in the group assembly, that, that and as, uh, at least that the one that we worked in, I can't say whether all group assemblies are the same because I didn't experience it. The only thing I can say without just this little segment of group assembly there, I didn't like. Now, I don't want that to sound like uh, I'm in favor of ours. Uh, like, for example, in my own factory, that I think it's better because it's not. Because our plant is, uh, is, is not clean and it's not quiet and it's, it's not a nice environment. And, but I'm familiar with it. And uh, the system, you know, the, the type of system that I work in is, is different and it's, um, I'm accustomed to it. And although it sometimes it can be monotonous, it, uh, you don't have to work at that same pace because the line, the pace is set, automated, you know, it's not you're setting the pace. You don't have to put out the production, just a matter of putting your parts in there stuff like that but uh, I didn't really like the way the media you know the newspapers it, everything came out so negative and like the whole Swedish system was black you know and ours was great and that's not the way it, uh, I mannered at all I mean there's, there's anything you know I really um, I still can't get over you know in fact I'm very um, mixed up a lot of things because I see that that they've made so many improvements in their factories uh, the cleanliness and the quiet and the healthy atmosphere to make it more attractive to employees uh, they've done this and are still making a profit and I think this is very important why can't we uh, use these things here uh, have this type of thing, you know, clean, cleaner plants, quieter plants, and safer plants, and, and I'm sure they can still make a profit, especially because our system is so much faster than theirs. We could uh, make a profit somewhere, you know. I don't think it's just a matter of wanting to, people wanting to do it, and uh, I think it's very important that that people do continue to look for new ways to make better uh, work environments, you know, for people because it's, um, there's a lot of people who have to work in factories and, and uh, it's true that people who are uh, reasonably happy do make uh, better employees and do make better products than people who don't want to go to work and uh, work under terrible conditions. I mean, they just, I mean, uh, they don't want to show up because of, it's a bummer to go to work, and then when they're there, uh, the job they do is 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 terrible. 